Nathan Cox here, thanks for joining us around the home. Today I'm gonna give you guys an extensive overview setup on how to maintain your Samsung cordless Jet 70, 75, and 90. Okay, so as you guys can see, I got plenty of pets here. I've also got kids. So vacuuming is important around this household because we gotta do it a lot. We gotta do it a lot, okay? Where things got out of control, we gotta stay clean. So let me just get started, we'll just jump right in. And just as we get started here, so everyone knows, uh, there are chapters in this video, and you can see them actually on your timeline as well. So you can jump back and forth any part of this video you need to check out. You want to skip something or go back, review something, it's all there for you. Okay, now the Jet 70, 75, and 90 from Samsung, they all pretty much work on the same platform. As you can see here in this graphic uh, from Samsung, you can see how the filtration system works. And it's really a great system. It's how all, all of them are designed. So they really work pretty much all exactly the same, but as you go up, of course, you're gonna get a more powerful motor, a better runtime. Now, the 70 to 75 is really more, a little bit more runtime and, and more accessories. The 90, the Jet 90 is where you get the more powerful motor and everything else. That's really like their, uh, their flagship. Okay, so overview, let's go through the basics. All right, your battery pack is smacked right there on the back, okay? It removes very easily. Got a little release right there, push it in battery slides out, okay? You can buy additional battery packs, so you can have additional ones ready to go. So if this one, you know, dies while you're cleaning the house, you can just grab another one, stick it back on, and no wait time. Okay, now what about a fuel gauge for the battery? Because that's always important to have. You want to know how much power is left in the battery? Well, the Samsung, it's right here. You got the three LED lights there, and the same on the other side. And they'll be lit up and active, whether you're using the vacuum or if it's in the charger. And then each, each light kind of has like a dual function. So let's say you're dropping down, you drop down the third light. Um, now you drop down like 50% of that, it'll start to blink. And then, and then it'll blink before it goes down to the second bar. And the second bar will be solid as you're using it. As you drop down 50% of that one, then the second blink, uh, the bar will start to blink. So you'll know it's like halfway on that light, okay? So it actually is kind of like six lights built into three. And of course, for the battery, you need a charger. So here's a charger. It is designed to be able to be wall mounted. Um, you're like, what's all these funny things right here? Well, these you can actually stick your accessories on, your crevice tool and your brush, and they can lock them on here. And then the, the vacuum, this can charge one of two ways. You can slap the vacuum in here and it'll lock it on the wall and charge while it's there. Or, sorry, I just don't have enough hands. Or you can just take the battery out because uh, I don't have, uh, I keep this in my coat closet. I don't have an outlet in my coat closet, okay? So I just stick this on my office floor and then you can drop the battery right in there and it'll charge right like that too. So it'll charge either way. Now with the Jet 70, you're gonna get basic tools. You've got your crevice tool and your brush tool, but they're not just as basic as you think they might be. All right, so crevice tool, you know, looks pretty normal, but it does have this little latch right here and you can extend it out and you can get into really deep crevices, which is really cool. Or you can go back to normal. The brush has a similar function where you can have the bristles pulled back. Um, and there is a little brush right there so it doesn't scratch things, but you can do this like for picking up stuff across the floor. Or if you need the brush effect, like if you're cleaning blinds or something like that, there's a button you click right there and extends the bristles out and it gets more of a brush effect. So it's kind of like two tools in one. Now the Jet 75 will also have a little mini power upholstery brush. Uh, now you can use the power head on upholstery, but the little power brush, because I have it on another vacuum, is really nice thing to have. And there's another accessory that has a little bendable arm, kind of like this one built into the power head. So you can use that to get up and get a better angle on mini blinds, curtains, things like that. Okay. But the Jet 70 doesn't have those things. Uh, fairly basic kit. Now the power head is detachable just like that. All right. And you can stick the accessories on the pole. They lock right in. Or you can take the pole off and put the accessories directly onto the unit itself. Or even put the power head directly on the unit yourself. Like, well, that seems kind of like a little crazy. It's not because it's so perfect for stairs. Vacuuming stairs like this makes it a breeze, okay? I have stairs and they get hairy. The dogs run up and down or they'll sit at the stairs like that. So I've got to vacuum the stairs constantly and this is so much easier than the old canister uh, style with using the big hose and stuff like that. So awesome. So how to use it, let's jump right in on that. The Samsung has a really nice ergonomical grip, okay? And I will tell you the truth, I have the Dyson V11, which is also a very nice cordless vacuum. 
um, but I do not like the grip of it. Okay, and my fingers kind of get a little sore after using it for a while, and it has a trigger to turn it on and off. I really do prefer the control pad here of the Samsung. Now it's not as fancy as the control pad on, on the Dyson V11 because it tells you like the battery power and stuff like that. But I think it's really, I mean, it's nice to have those things, but it's really overkill. This here, you got the power button, you kick it on. And you see here, it says mid, that's mid-level power. You know, you can go down to minimum, power saver. Also, things that are more delicate, you might, you know, need to shut down for the vacuum power. Mid and max. Now I will tell you, I would only use max at like in, in burst areas, okay? Some place where it's really dirty, you kick it in, or maybe you're trying to get a crevice in the car, you know, you're using, you got this going in, you're trying to get between the seats in the car, you kick it in for max, uh, but it drains the battery really hard. Uh, not only do you lose all your run time, um, but it's just not good just to run it. If, you, if you're going to use it running all the time like that, you're going to really kill the life of your battery because it's a really hard discharge. Now, I'm not trying to, you know, like fear monger you guys out there and make you think, oh, I'll never use that. I'm saying use it on the main one that kicks in, the, the middle one, as a normal, as a rule of thumb. And then just kick it in for that extra boost when you got a really dirty area or someplace where it's hard and you just can't get it. Okay, and then flip back. That's what I'm saying. There are error messages that will pop up here if something's wrong. Uh, if there's a problem with the suction, it might shut down and tell you there's an error message. Or sometimes the power head uh, has gotten bound up on something. I can't remember what it was. It was trying to eat a rug, I think it was. And it shut the power head down to, to keep it from being damaged. And it gave me an error message up here too. Um, so you just, you just turn it off you know, fix the problem and then turn it back on, you're all good. Okay, so let, let's demonstrate, all right, the, the main purpose of this is gonna be vacuuming your floors. So we're gonna click the tube in, click the power head in, and let's do a little vacuuming. All right, we're just gonna kick it in and start running. It's nice, because it's not very loud. You can definitely still have a conversation while vacuuming. It has plenty of power. It did it. It doesn't really freak out the animals like the ladder vacuums do. And you can get underneath some serious stuff here. Okay. So under most couches and tables and uh, anything else, you can get under most all furniture with this. So I would tell you for reasons like that, the fact that these are just light, easy to use, easy to grab, don't have to run and grab cords, plug them in, but you can also get underneath things. I really feel that these new cordless stick facts are the perfect merging, you know, of the upright vacuums that so many of you have had and the old canisters, which like I used to have, um, because you can, you know, the canister had that big hose, the big clunky tank thing you have to drag around, but you could get underneath furniture with it. You could really get around things. So the power head, the big upright power head units, you can't get around or under anything. I mean, you get around stuff, but you know what I mean? You can't get in the tight spots with it. Okay. The next part of this is going to be talking about how to empty the container and clean it. Okay. So emptying the container of the Samsung is not as easy as say like on the Dyson or the Shark. Okay. But it has an advantage on the cleaning part. So right here, there's a little button up front. You're just going to push it in and see it releases it. And then there's two wings right here. So you just kind of like wiggle it and they'll slide down. Now from here, this is pretty simple. You're just going to take this, um, and I, I like you give it a little bit of spin and it'll pop open. You dump it in the trash can and then when you go to put it back in, just try to make sure that this is kind of, you know, this cylinder here, there's a little cylinder, the bottom here, and they just line, they line up pretty easy. And then there is, try to get it so you guys can see it. All right, so it's not glaring at the light. There's a little notch right here, which locks on here. All right, so you're, you push the button in, lock it in, okay? And she's ready to go back on. Now going back on is pretty simple. It's not really complex. You're thinking, what about those wings? It's just slide this in. The wings are spring loaded, okay? So it makes this part pretty easy. Push it in where the button's gonna lock in at first. You can hear that click. And now you're gonna just click the wings in. Make sure you're locked, locked in here before you're ready to go, and you're done. You've emptied it and you're ready to keep going. And trust me, if you have pets, you're gonna empty this kind of a lot, yeah, especially if you have pets and carpet and kids. Um, it just picks up, it picks up a lot. It picks up more than my old canister did. So this little cordless thing does better than that. Uh, I know because I went over some areas and tested it and it really did. I, I could like go over the area with a big 
canister vac and I came back with this, it was still picking stuff up. So really, really impressed with it. Okay, now let's get back, and let's get, we're getting off track. What about cleaning the filters? Some of you are like, what do you mean clean filters? This is bagless, right? Well, yes, it's bagless, but it's not filterless. So your old bagged vacuums, the bag was the filter. Um, so you throw it away and every time you put a new bag in, you get a new filter. Um, so that's convenient, but there's a lot, a lot of waste. So, you know, this is a, a, a much less wasteful way, but let's open this back up, okay? And there's two filters on this vacuum, and, and that's why it's most of these uh, stick vacuums are all basically the same in, in that aspect. So we got a filter right up top here. It just kind of pops, there's a little pull tab, I'm sorry. You stick your finger underneath there and pops up. And you see, it, it's just like kind of a foam filter. This is your intake filter, all right? This way it catches most everything right off the bat. All these little tubes right there. Um, so to clean this off, you're gonna wash it. And that's the cool part, all right? So washing this, and then when you, every time you wash it, it comes off so clean, it's like brand new. So just get yourself a sink of soapy water. And I say soapy water, and some manufacturers say you don't use soap at all, like the Shark says that, and I got people in the comments saying, wait, they don't use soap. All right, so be very specific here. I'm talking about Dawn soap. Wait, hold on a second. Because when I tell people Dawn soap, they're like, okay, yeah, I got that. And then I'm turning around like when I'm like uh, doing a remodel project in their house and they're using some kind of generic soap or they're using uh, another name brand soap. And I said, wait, I said Dawn soap. You said you had Dawn soap. They're like, it's the same thing. It's, it's not the same thing. Okay. Dawn. Dawn original or Dawn ultra. That's it. Okay. Not any of the ones with lotion in it, not the other brands, not the off brands. I bought an off brand once just to see how close it was to the Dawn and it caked up the tips constantly. And that in my, my soap dispenser, okay? Cause there was something in there. It was causing like a, a waxy residue. Not good for the filters, okay? Fill it up with nice warm water. Just a couple drops of Dawn, just like two, three drops. That's all you need. Get a little bit of soap in there. Drop this in there, swish it around. Open this up, take it in there, swish it around and rinse and then fill up the water. Make sure to rinse it out really good. Here's the other thing, you gotta rinse it out really good. A new sink, you know, full, just clean warm water, rinse everything out, give it a nice little shake, and then set it up on the counter to dry. Put a towel underneath it, and it's gonna take at least 24 hours to dry, okay? And you're gonna wanna like set it up like this, and then come, you know, later, like maybe overnight, then in the morning, set it all like, on the side like that. And make sure everything gets really dry before you put it back together, okay? And this filter here, there is, it's a, I don't know, Okay, it won't really let you put it in wrong, but so you can see how to put it in right. On uh, right here, there's a, a little in groove, a groove and a notch, and that fits right where the button is. So if you stick that right where the button is, and you've got it, boom, you're ready to go. And yet there's still one more filter, the exhaust filter, all right? It's right in here, it's kind of hidden, and this is what but some people are like, well, where's the HEPA filter? Where do you clean that? Okay, what gives this Samsung the HEPA rating is the exhaust filter. So we're gonna take this and we're just gonna give it a like quarter turn, counterclockwise, lefty-loosey, and it pops off. And in here, you see the paper pleated filter, and that's what gives it the HEPA rating. Um, now I think, um, I have washed this before. I try not to because it's kind of like, really in there, I prefer to use my air compressor and blow this one out. I find that is kind of a little bit easier way to keep it from, you know, so it can dry out properly and stuff like that. So I prefer to blow this one out and not wash it. Now putting this back on is really just as simple as taking it off. Now whether you blew it out or you just looked at it and you're like, ah, oh, that looks pretty darn clean, I think it's good for now. You're gonna stick it back on, make sure the Samsung name is right side up. It's obviously gonna turn to the left a little bit. There we go. Now it falls into place. And we're gonna turn it back to the right. It kind of has like a little notch you can feel kind of click. Samsung name is centered and we're done. Now let's talk power head maintenance. Now some of you are like, what? Yes, yes, you do need to maintain your power head, but it's mostly about making sure that the main roller bristle is, is clean and free of like hair and other things wrapped around it. Now, I'm sure some of you are wondering, well, how bad is it about hair? Well, uh, both my wife and daughter have long hair. Um, and then I got the German Shepherd too, which maybe his hair really isn't quite long enough to wrap around it but that's how my roller bristle looks almost all the time. I've had this vacuum for the right, and just so you guys know, I've had this vacuum in service for almost a year now, like eight months or something like that. Um, and I've only cleaned this out like one time. So it doesn't sit there and grab stuff. It has a really good, these short bristles, 
uh, they do a good job of cleaning and not really wrapping stuff up. But when it does, Samsung made this really, really easy to do, all right? Very toolless. There's a little push button right here on the side. You're just gonna push it in and slide it out. And there's your bristle. And then you can clean all the hair off if you want. You know, you can make sure if there's something stuck in here, maybe your son was vacuuming and sucked up some plastic wads and stuck in the power head. You know, it would be stuck probably generally right up there. So easy to get out and clean. Um, a lot of times, uh, I do take this out. I have taken this out, like the one time I cleaned it, maybe it was twice, to be honest, probably twice. I took an air compressor and blew it all out. Just got the, uh, all the extra dust out of here. That's also good to do. Sliding it back in is just simply slide it in. Obviously, you gotta make sure to, to get on that little, that little uh, notch in there. It's probably easier to do that, like gravity helped me find it. There you go. Clicks in and you're done. It's done, that's it. I just maintained it. Just took it apart, stuck it back together. All right, quick review on this vacuum before I wrap everything up. I have this, this vacuum here, obviously. I also have the Dyson V11, which I mentioned earlier. And I also had the Shark Rocket Pro, uh, which I gave to my daughter. Um, three different price points. This one here is about $350. The Shark was about 200. And then the Dyson is like way up, like, like almost $700. A little insane. Uh, but you know, I found they were all great vacuums for their price point. But, uh, you know, given if if I lost all the vacuums or, or whatever, which one would I probably buy back? Um, it'd probably be this one here. I really enjoyed this one the most. Um, I find that it, it, it cleans up. I mean, even though the dumping isn't as quick as just hitting a hatch, um, the washing up of the, the tub and the main filter unit is, is very easy. It dries very easy. Um, I find that after using it for all this time, taking things apart, snapping them back together, uh, maneuvering around things, uh, I find the Samsung just has a very good fit and finish, a quality to it. Um, the ergonomics of the handle, the simplicity of the controls, uh, the way the power head moves and gets underneath furniture is able to, to still maneuver well. Uh, this one is my favorite. Honestly, I'll be completely honest. Samsung is my favorite out of, out of all those three lines. Um, I will have Amazon links in the description down below, uh, whichever ones I can find. I might not, I, at the moment, as I'm making this, I don't know that I had it for the 70, but I'm pretty sure the 75 and the 90 are available. You guys can also buy this online at like Lowe's.com or HomeDepot.com. Now we are an Amazon affiliate. So if you want to buy them through Amazon, please use their links. It helps us out, helps support the channel, the website. I guess that's really a wrap right there. So please take a moment, subscribe to the channel, check out our website. There is another video for you to see as well. You guys have a great day.